everybody. I'm Mr. Math Bog here, and this is on problem solving with money. So this is for the integrated math one uh, for our school district. So uh, there's our common core strand for our teachers. And here we're going to use money to represent problem solving skills with equations and expressions. Also, I should have put that in there. Uh, so how can we use money to write expressions and equations to represent uh, totals? So I'm gonna, we're going to review some money skills right here. So let's access prior knowledge here. So uh, find the total amount of money below. Okay, so looks like here's a dollar, here's a dollar. This is a 50 cent piece, so this is a half dollar, this is a quarter, this is a dime, and this is a, a penny right there. Okay, so we're going to add them all up right there. So I have um, uh, one dollar, one dollar, 50 cents, 25 cents, 10 cents, and one cent. Okay, a dollar, you guys, is represented as 1.00. Cents, 50 cents is represented as 0 0.50, so this would be 0 0.25, this would be 0 0.10, and this would be 0 0.01. Okay, so here's that penny right there, here's that dime, here's the quarter, here's the 50 cents, and then here's the two dollars. So we're going to go ahead and add those up. So when I add these numbers up, I get six right here, nothing to carry. So here's seven, eight. I got eight right here. So 86 cents, nothing to carry. And then the two dollars. So two dollars and 86 cents is what I get right there. All right, let's try this, you guys. Okay. So here I have some uh, some dimes right here. Ten cents, ten cents, ten cents. Here's a quarter. Here's some pennies right here. And then here's three nickels. Okay. Remember, a nickel is 0 0.05. These are uh, 0 0.01. These are 0 0.10, and that's 0 0.25. Okay. So we're gonna add those up right there. Okay, so when I add them all up, uh, the quarters, I have one quarter, I have three dimes, so I multiplied three times each dime is 30 cents, so 0 0.30. The nickels, I have three nickels, so that's 15 cents, and then there are six pennies. Okay, so let's add them all up. Let's see, I think I squeezed it in right there in the middle. Yeah, I did. Six plus five is 11, plus five more is 16, so I carried this one right here for the 10 on the 16. So one plus two is three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, nothing to carry right there. So you get 76 cents, and then in dollars, it's uh, 0 0.76. So most of the time, we represent it like this. Okay, you'll see where I represent it in cents here uh, soon. So together, uh, Ro uh, Rosalinda and Matthew have $1.20, and they want to share the money equally. So uh, how much will each get? Okay, so, so we're going to read the problem here. So what do we need to find out? What information do we need to use? And how are we going to use this information? Okay, so need to find out the amount of money each is going to get with this dollar twenty right there okay now we can't uh, cut that dollar in half so what we've got to do is exchange it so we need to use the total amount of a dollar twenty and divide that into equal parts okay and a lot of you guys are thinking why well, I, I know how to do this in my head well that that's awesome if you do you guys some some people still struggle with this so be patient you guys um, so we're going to use coins uh, to model the total amount and then act out this problem, okay? So what I'm going to do is ch exchange um, uh, the one dollar for four quarters right there. Cause it, you guys know that four quarters equals a dollar, right? Okay, and then we got the two dimes right there, and then that's pretty easy, you guys. Now I can just circle. Um, uh, Rosalinda is going to get this side and then or the top, and then, and then Matthew will get the bottom right here. So when I uh, circle those right there, uh, I can see that each person is going to get two quarters and then one dime. So two quarters is 50 cents and the one dime is 60 cents. Okay, now you don't have to do it like that. I'm just showing you uh, one type of problem solving skills. So describe another way we could act out the problem using different coins. Okay, well, since you have a dollar twenty, I could have divided it up into 10 or, or 12 equal dimes, you guys. 12 dimes also makes a dollar twenty. Because you look, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then another 60 right there. So each person would have got 60 cents in dimes right there. Okay? So let's try another. Uh, Nia, uh, Lucia, and Mia each have 40 cents. How much money do they have together? Okay, well, how are we going to represent that 40 cents, you guys? So we need to find uh, how much money uh, they, they have total and what information we're going to use if they each have 40 cents and how we're going to use that. So... Uh, um, uh, so we need to find the total amount of money that all three have and we're going to use the fact that they each have 40 cents and we can use coins to model the 40 cents each time. Now I know you guys are thinking just multiply 40 times 3 and that's fine you guys just remember it's 40 cents times 3. Okay but I'm going to use coins and I, so, so uh, I'm going to use a quarter 
A quarter and a dime is uh, there's 25 cents, so plus 10 more is 35 cents, plus 5 more is 40 cents. So here's 40 cents right here. Here's 40 cents. Here's 40 cents. So uh, what we can do is add up all the quarters. So 25, 25, and 25 is 75. I know what you're thinking. I'm doing it the harder way. And that's okay. I'm just showing you a different way, you guys. There's my three dimes, 30 cents. There's my three nickels, 15 cents. So if I add all those up, that adds up to a dollar twenty. You don't have to do it that way. We're just showing you different type of problem solving skills, you guys. And that's our goal is to show you different ways. So explain how we can use the problem using dimes and nickels. Okay, well, each person has 40 cents. So what I could do is uh, each person has three dimes and two nickels. Okay, to use just dimes and nickels, I could have used a different arrangement. I could have done two dimes and then four nickels. Okay, for each one. So this is 40 cents, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40. So there's, there's one way and we can add up uh, all the dimes right there. Okay, so the dimes, this, this row of dimes adds up to 30. This row of dimes adds up to 30, 30, and then 15, and then 15. Again, we're just showing you different types of problem solving skills. Those still add up to 120, okay? No, you don't have to do it that way. We're just showing you different ways to do it. So if you get stuck, there are always other ways to solve problems. Okay, let's try, let's try this. Hamburgers cost $2 each and French fries cost $0.10 cents per fry. So here it is, $0.10. Cents. I'm going to represent $0.10 cents as dollars in just a second. So write an expression to show the total cost for any given number of hamburgers and fries. Write an equation if you spend a total of $6.60. And if you uh, spent 660, what combination of burgers and fries could you have? Okay, so we'll do a table on this last one right here. Okay, so what I'm going to first do is note that 10 cents is the same as uh, represented in dollars as 0 0.10. Okay, and it's better if you're going to represent this as dollars to represent this as dollars. So if I was going to do it all in cents, you guys, and I didn't in this video, um, if I did 10 cents, I'd have to represent this as 200 cents. And I'd rather stay away from smaller numbers if I could. Okay, so I'm going to let H equal the number of hamburgers and F equal the number of fries. So, so the total cost is going to be $2 for each hamburger and then $0.10, cents, 0 .10 for each fry. So there's, there's an expression that represents the total cost. So write an equation. If we spend a total of 660, just let this equal 660, okay? So 2H plus 0 .10F equals 660. So if we spent 660, what combination of burgers and fries can you have? Okay, so I'm going to take that up here. There's my equation right there, and I'm going to set up a table. So my table is going to be the number of hamburgers, the number of fries, and then this total. This total is going to be the 660 right there. So I'm going to put one fry in there, and that's going to equal $6.60. Okay, so if I, I'm sorry, one fry, one hamburger. So I'm going to put one hamburger right there, so that's what this is right there. So 2 times 1 is 2. So you guys remember from pre-algebra, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So here we go. Subtract 2 from both sides. And I get 0.10F equals 6 point, or sorry, 6 minus 2 is 4, 4.60. And then I'm going to go ahead and move the decimal over two places here. So I'm going to move the decimal over two places there. And I get 10F equals 460. And then 10 goes into 460 46 times. So if he had one hamburger, he's going to have 46 fries. If it's going to total 660. Okay, uh, let's see. So if you had two hamburgers, then we're going to do it again. I'm going to plug in two right there. Okay, so if I had two hamburgers, it'd be two times two because two dollars for each hamburger. And so this is four, so I'm going to subtract four from both sides. There we go. And then when I subtract four, 660 minus four dollars is 260. Again, move the decimal over two places. I get 10F equals 260. Um, so, so there'd be 26 fries if he had two hamburgers. Okay, remember it's got a total 660. So 2 times uh, 2 plus 10, uh, 0.10 times 26, that would add up to 660. Could he have three hamburgers? Well, yeah, if he's really hungry. How many fries? Okay, let's do that again. So $2 for each hamburger, 2 times 3, that's 6. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, and then I get um, uh, uh, the point ten, these cancel. I forgot to cancel that right there. The point uh, one zero f, which is point ten f, equals sixty cents. So he could have uh, six fries. Now, if I had four hamburgers, 
Well, since each hamburger is uh, uh, two bucks, that's over six sixty. That'd be eight bucks. So I can't have four hamburgers right there. So those are the only possible arrangements. You can have one hamburger, forty six fries, two hamburgers or twenty six fries, or three hamburgers and six fries. So that's what uh, that's what you could have spent on that. Okay, so now I want you to make a table showing values of one dime, two dimes, three dimes, etc. And then we'll do D dimes and then do another one for nickels. Uh, so one nickel, two nickels, three nickels, and we'll do N nickels. And then quarters, one quarter, two quarter, three quarters, and then Q quarters, okay? So there they are right there, okay? So one dime represents 10 cents. The value is 0 0.10. Two dimes is twice that. Three dimes is three times that. So D dimes, whatever D is, is uh, this value right here times D. Same for nickels, except nickels is 0 0.05. So two nickels would be twice that, so 10 cents. Three nickels is 15 cents. N nickels is 0 0.05 times N. And the same thing for quarters, except it's 0.25 times the number of quarters right there. Okay, so here it is right there. So let's use that information. What would each look like if the total was $2? Okay, so what I'm thinking is, how many dimes do you need to get two dollars? How many nickels do you need to get two dollars? How many quarters do you need to get two dollars? So it would look something like that. You'd have these three equations right here. So 10 or 0 0.10 D equals two dollars. And that's good enough for me, you guys. 0 0.05 N equals two dollars and then 0 0.25 Q equals two dollars. Okay, so what would each look like if there was at least four dollars? Well, at least means you can have more. So that would be a greater than or equal to, because it says at least. So it's all of these expressions except greater than or equal to than four. Okay, what would each look like if there was no more than three dollars? Well, that means it's three dollars or less. So that would be a, a less than or equal to. So it would be, it'd be those equations right there. Okay, less than or equal to right there. Okay, so what I'd like you to do in your groups, you guys, and your teachers also, is in your groups, create various expressions and equations and using different money arrangements to create tables. I want you to create tables that show each situation and be ready to explain your examples to the class. Okay? Alright, I hope that helps you guys. Take care.